When we first jump into the Demon Slayer story, one of the characters we meet at the beginning is Tanjiro's sister Nezuko, and as we watch the brother and sister duo throughout the years, we've seen both of them grow, and for some of you, they might very well be your favorite Demon Slayer characters. However, in today's newest Demon Slayer video, we're going to be going over 10 Nezuko facts that you probably don't know or you might have overlooked if you've only watched the anime, and you might not know unless you are the hardcore of most hardcore Demon Slayer fans. So jumping right in at number one, did you know that Nezuko's name is a mix of multiple kanji letters n-e-z-u-k-o and they have multiple meanings for each that directly fits into her character design and her character art so any -E is associated with buddhism shrines and ancestor altars hinting at a spiritual or protective set of qualities and wouldn't you know it nezuko is carried around in a small box that resembles a shrine the z-u part of her name it means bean which in japanese culture symbolizes fertility growth and even food that can ward off evil spirits and it's that last one that is very interesting given that she's a demon who is able to fight off her urges to consume human blood as a source of type of a food so in a way she's fought off the evil spirit that is in her demon nature itself the ko part of her name is the suffix for japanese girls that means child which is why we see that sweet adorable chibi version of nezuko who acts like a small child at times when you put everything together you get shrine being child or protector being child which makes sense given all the above information Information, with the first being the small child being carried around in a wooden box like a shrine and protective bean child who tried to protect her family when moves and slaughtered them all in the way that she still tries to protect Tanjiro at times in fights, protects her allies in fights, and protects humans instead of killing them. Number two, continue with Nezuko's name. Did you know that there is a Buddhism connection to her name as well? So when you look at the kanji, it has religious connotations suggesting a connection to spiritual protection and purity aligning with her resistance to consuming human blood and her protective nature. This also symbolically fits in with why she was able to conquer the sun like we saw at the end of the last demon slayer season as the sunlight rose on a new day it also closed a chapter in her life where she as a demon needed to fear sunlight because she was now someone who was able to stand in the sunlight glowing like an angel not yet tainted by the impurity of this world because she was symbolically reborn in that moment the purity aspect fits in to her nature when she was in that chibi form because her behaviors are pure and innocent like we've come to associate with children who tend to see the world more so in a black and white manner they see the world as how it should be what it could be and not necessarily how it actually is we see glimpses of this in how she interacts with tandro and how she previously interacted with mitsuri and the source myth village arc the spiritual connection and purity also comes back down to why she was the one out of her family to survive muzan's attack and why she was the one who conquered the sun after all the failures that Muzan had had in the past because she was spiritually protected and this is even more so believable when you factor in the Japanese belief especially during that time period where Kotodama which is the belief that words and names they have power it all makes sense the girl with the name that has ties to spiritual protection just happens to be protected from the fate of being a human eating demon living in the darkness but she's now able to walk in the sun she is spiritually protected kind of poetic when you think about it number three keeping in line with the buddhism aspect of her character did you know that the other reason for nezuko's resistance to drinking human blood is likely inspired by the buddhism principles of non-harm and self-restraint her character embodies the struggle between her demonic nature and her innate goodness in buddhism self-sacrifice and compassion they are valued virtues nezuko's transformation into a demon and her subsequent fight to protect humans despite her condition it mirrors those buddhism values in fact there's more than just buddhism here with nezuko's character so at number four did you know that nezuko despite never wielding a sword in combat she is actually ridden with aspects of bushido the samurai code and the family duality so here's the thing about that nezuko's strong sense of duty and protection of her family that she showed is directly linked to bushido the samurai code of loyalty and honor in japanese folklore that involves samurai there are often vengeful spirits that are shown there while nezuko herself isn't vengeful vengeful her transformation to a demon is based on some of these ghost stories and demon stories where in the folklore in particular with the former there are still maintained ties to their living relatives just as nezuko has her strong ties to tanjiro who also has a connection with their family in the afterlife as we've seen a few different times in the 
story, as well as his ancestor inherited memories. Number five, did you know the reason Nezuko wears bamboo for a muzzle isn't just to prevent herself from eating humans or because of the various uses that bamboo had in Japanese during this era where the story took place? For instance, bamboo was used to restrain people or purify people, which the latter should make you look at her being given bamboo early on in the story during her demon transformation a lot differently. Now, it was an attempt to not only subdue her demonic power, but also to try and purify her, symbolically that is. It was also chosen for Nezuku because symbolically, bamboo in Japanese is often used to symbolize purity, and so by having her with that bamboo in her mouth, it goes back to the N.E. part of her name that is associated with the shrine. It is a reflection of her purity, of her character, and how in spite of her demonic nature, due to her demon form, someone so pure as her eventually gets to walk in the sunlight, showcasing that even though for as much of the story as she was enshrouded in the darkness, never able to walk in the light, she was still a purity that shine through eventually nonetheless. Number six, did you know that Nezuko's pink kimono has a deeper symbolism to it as well? It's a decorated hemp leaf pattern which symbolizes growth and resilience in Japanese culture, which is exactly what Nezuko has in this story. Physical growth when she transforms very rapidly into her demon form from her chibi form, but also her character growth as we see her over time overcome her demonic nature when she's been fully transformed and fight off her anger. Resilience and how she was able to overcome the burden and misfortune of being turned into a demon seemingly destined to never walk in the sun ever again until she was able to finally conquer the sun. Also, this pattern is placed onto the clothing of female children to wish them a rapid and very healthy growth because hemp, again, is fast growing, it is resilient, and it is a strong plant. Also, her design and her transformations have a visual resemblance to the makeup and costumes used in traditional no and kabuki theater, which have been performed since the Muromachi and the Edo periods of Japan, respectively, which these art forms also often have supernatural themes and characters who undergo dramatic transformations, just like Nezuko. Number seven, did you know that Nezuko's name is also often associated with ancestral shrines via the word Neko and has roots in the Muromachi period from 1336 to, to 1573, where families would enshrine their ancestors and offer protection and prayers to their spirits, which ties back into to the theme of Nezuko's character in terms of her protecting family and Tanjiro protecting her, a complete overlap in the concept of family protection and guardianship. Number eight, did you know that Nezuko's character, in particular her demon form and his powers, it draws inspiration from Japanese folklore involving Tanuki and Kutsune characters. So the ability to change size and exhibit supernatural strength parallels the folklore surrounding the Tanuki, which is a raccoon dog, and the Kutsune, which is a fox both of which are legendary in Japanese mythology and folklore and are known for their shape-shifting abilities, with there being stories of each changing their size, just like Nezuko. Nezuko transforming is just like the Tanuki and the Kasune, who would transform into humans in order to interact with them. But thankfully, Nezuko doesn't play nearly as many tricks as they did. Her fire-based abilities can also be traced back to foxes and the stories of foxes using fox fire. But most likely, her fire-based abilities, given the writing of her character, go in the direction of Kagusuchi, the god of fire, who is a central figure in Japanese Shinto mythology mythology where he is viewed as both a destructive force with his fire as well as a purifying force just as we've seen Nezuko use her flames for good with the demon slayers as you saw like in particular with season two of the anime and for bad with the demons that she's attacking and for bad I mean bad for the demons of course. Number nine did you know that before Nezuko became a demon she had already described what her future husband would look like she said that her ideal man is like a rook which is a shogi piece that can move any number of squares horizontally or vertically, which we learned that information in Jump Giga, the quarterly magazine that Shonen Jump publishes, which somewhere Zenitsu is definitely taking notes of this. Now at number 10, did you know that Nezuko, according to the first Demon Slayer data book, is a master of rock, paper, scissors, where back when her family was alive, they would play a game of rock, paper, scissors to settle disputes and Nezuko went undefeated. That's going to be it for this video on Nezuko, but if you're still looking to get your fix with Demon Slayer content, click here on the left to watch the videos in the Demon Slayer playlist or click here on the right for my newest Kaiju number 8 video.